How's it going, everyone? Petty Kish Hunt here with another Opic. Today, we're going to be talking about this leak, which is for Resident Evil 9 being open world. It's just a leak, guys, so take this with a grain of salt. It's not official yet. Capcom's trying to move forward with their open world experiences. You've seen that in Dragon's Dogma 2 that just came out. They're moving forward with Monster Hunter Wilds and now Resident Evil 9. So we're going to be reading about that as well as speculating where Capcom could be moving forward with Resident Evil, the franchise. Um, obviously, we're going to see more remakes coming out of there uh, and maybe some spinoffs here and there. There's a lot of those in play. But before we do any of that, guys, I'd love it if you guys could like, share, sub, follow all the things you could do to support me on this channel. I really appreciate if you can do that. All right, guys, let's get into this. Let's read this article and let me give you my two cents, what I think about it. All right, guys, I'm on Eurogamer and they have an article up here saying Resident Evil 9 will be open world, leaker suggests. Uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 expanded re engine functionality for open world games yes so there's been a thing uh there's been a leak out of what games are coming out of capcom studios right now with what ips what productions they're doing and a lot of it is just they're pushing themselves with the dragon's dogma 2 and the monster Hunter wild and then resident evil 9 most of it for this year and next year um, they're pushing those, but this is very interesting because Resident Evil has never really done open world. It's mostly a secluded little area most of the time. There were pathways you can take usually um, even later in the, you know, in some of the newer games. It's, it's semi-open, I would say. There are areas where you can explore a lot and move around sometimes on a boat or little areas here and there but it was never like super open where you can go everywhere it was like closed open world so it has been sort of done but not to the extent as you know like an assassin's creed or you know like a witcher or something like that it hasn't been done because usually survival horror games are secluded. They're usually in tight spaces. The fear factor, the survival, trying to see how you can adjust your inventory space and all that. Because if, if it's more open world, you just run and you can probably run and just, you know, get out of the way if there's like a zombie in your way or something. That's why I love about the older games of Resident Evil because they were really, really tight. The controls were tight. The camera was all over the place with the fixed camera angles and it messed you up in that way. It was very fun and very different for the time. I don't know how I feel about this, but let's just read into it first. Resident Evil 9 is reportedly being developed as an open world game. That's according to the noted leaker, Dust Gollum who said that following Capcom's improvements to the RE engine, when developing open world experiences like Dragon's Dogma 2, Capcom is eager to capitalize on the expanded tech when making Monster Hunter Wild and Resident Evil 9. So here's a little tidbit I'll share. Dust Golem said on X slash Twitter, Capcom often will greenlit new intentives in three closer together. Distant examples are Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 2 Remake, and Devil May Cry 5 were all greenlit fairly close together to take advantage of their new RE engine. And the idea to remake RE2 inspired them to also take on Resident Evil 3 Remake and Resident Evil 4 Remake for a remake intensive. So all of these came together on the RE engine. The RE engine started with Resident Evil 7, which Resident Evil went a really different route with 7. For the better and worse, um, it brought a bunch of new players through the franchise with Resident Evil, 
but also secluded a lot of the older fans that loved the Resident Evil franchise with some characters and as well as some changes in gameplay, especially with the first person point of view. Uh, they changed a lot with that, but they did also do Resident Evil 2, which the remake is very well done. It's third person. I wish they would have added a second option for the fixed camera angles while playing it, but modders have done that now. So that's a plus now. So it's still a very good game though. Um, and then Devil May Cry 5 is probably the best Devil May Cry from the franchise. Hands down. It's like one of the best ones there. So th those were all really well done. Uh, and then they moved forward with the remakes because they just wanted to do more and more of that because they knew it's going to sell well and they were doing really well. Besides Resident Evil 3, probably the weakest from the remakes. There was a lot of stuff that was cut out. A lot of characters felt different. Um, I still kind of enjoy Resident Evil 3, not going to lie. I kind of still enjoy it, but I see a lot of uh, problems with it too. It's not as good as the original for sure. The original is always going to be better. Um, if they did like a director's cut for Resident Evil 3 remake and add all that stuff in for later and, and say Capcom says a sorry letter to everyone and you know, you can grab this. We're so sorry. This is a free DLC for you guys. We're really sorry. I hope you guys and maybe they'll get more more people buying the game again if they did like a director's cut more things they want to add in there and like change you know they can't really change too much but they can add more to resident Evil 3 if they wanted to and i think it would be a better experience in the long run i think it would be better re4 remake i think it's perfect it's really well done um yes there are parts where i i liked original more but there are things I really like in this remake as well. So those were all really, really good games altogether. Dragon's Dogma 2 expanded RE Engine functionality for open world games. The two other games building on their tech is Monster Hunter Wild and Resident Evil 9. Uh, all three project goals has been to retain the series DNA. Golem added in a subsequent tweet, Dragon's Dogma 2 is still clearly Dragon's Dogma. Wild is still clearly Monster Hunter. Same will be true for Resident Evil 9. Capcom has not formally confirmed that Resident Evil 9 is in development, although it is fair to presume it is. Shinomanki, the legendary development behind Resident Evil and a string of other classics, recently founded a new company. Mikami worked as creative producer on the original Shadows of the Damned game, though it is not thought to be directly involved in its upcoming remake. After 12 years as its CEO at the time, I was unclear what Mikami would end up doing next. Not really much you can go on here. It's just I saw this article and I saw some leaks about it. So, Will it actually be open world? Will it be like, can do so much and this and that? No, I think it's trying to be true to what Resident Evil is. Is it going to be open world? No, it's going to be semi open. My opinion, it's going to be semi open. If it is open world, if Resident Evil changes up how survival horror is done in an open world environment, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're testing the waters and trying to be innovative with this open world survival horror of new Resident Evil 9. If they find a way to make this a new thing, a lot of other companies will try to follow this kind of tech, this kind of sense of an open world survival horror. It could be revolutionary to that point. We'll see. When, when, when we see more things, I think they're going to announce Resident Evil 9 this year at some conference. They're going to be showing it or some showcase. They're going to show Resident Evil 9, maybe like a teaser trailer and show you what like the setting is, what characters they're going to have, what maybe the story arc is going to be. And I don't, I doubt it. We're going to see gameplay. I think gameplay is going to come, come later, but who knows? Now, the question is, will it be first person third person or fixed camera angles well as a trend i see recently with the resident evil franchise 
Um, if you look back at like the old Resident Evils, it was all fixed camera angles from you know different angles, cameras. You move around, you search around uh, different scenery areas, and the character moves around. Obviously, we know what that is. Play it, you played it. That was it. One, two, three. Code Veronica, even Resident Evil Zero, they had that. Then they moved into this new kind, which is more action focused instead of the. Uh, tight control, survival horror, less inventory space. They moved out of that to more an action survival horror, which was with Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 5, and Resident Evil 6. Third person, camera angles. Obviously, the visuals were upgraded and much more and more story driven there too. Everything was a bit different there. A lot of people that grew up playing the old Resident Evil weren't a really big fan of it. But they accepted it in some way. People still love it. There is a charm to it. Even being Resident Evil 4, 4 when they started that new thing, people didn't like it because it was different. But then people accepted it over time. They kind of enjoyed Resident Evil 4. And then Resident Evil 5 for the co-op feature. Resident Evil 6 was where it pretty much went downhill because that game was all over the place. It was trying to be a crazy Michael Bay kind of movie. And it just... It, it, it didn't hit as hard as the other two did that's where the franchise went downhill so they sort of did like a reboot so i see a lot of like threes the resident Evil one two and three fixed camera four five and six third person and then we go to this new one which was resident Evil seven and then resident Evil eight and then nine two of the games were first person because they started this new one so they wanted to do a first person with different characters coming up some older characters in the background doing their thing, but mostly it was all about these new characters they're gonna bring up. Even there were spin-offs like Outbreak, obviously from the old ones. They had the Revelation series, which was closer to what the originals were, but in a third person with Revelations 1 and 2. Going back. So what they said about that Rose DLC in 8. My thing is. That was third person, right? And the Resident Evil 8 was played in first person, but they added a DLC later where you can play in third person. So most of the people that love Resident Evil, the majority actually like more of the third person kind of perspective. And, and Capcom knows this. My guess, if you wanna please a lot of people at nine, you would do first person, third person, and fixed camera angles which is, I know, a lot to take in, and it would be crazy to do, especially what they're saying with this open world. But if it's possible to do, you're gonna have a lot of people like this. They're gonna love it. It's gonna be almost like a love letter to all the Resident Evils that came up. All the perspectives are there, all of them for you to enjoy, as well as this story concluding or this is all fan service in a good way i'm not saying fan service can go wrong but good fan service to what came before and a love letter to resident evil fans now that would be the best thing to do with this this game coming up uh, if they're trying to wrap it up the story if they want to wrap it up what i'm guessing is it's going to be still focused this is just my dream but it would be aw awesome if it happened but let's be honest it's probably going to be first person or third person. During uh, this Easter break, I was um, hanging out with my sister. I was introduced her to Resident Evil. She's like, I really want to get into Resident Evil, but I don't know where to start. So I was like, yeah, you just start with Resident Evil 1. Obviously, I showed her Resident Evil 1 on PS1, how, like how the graphics look. You know, they don't really hold up no more. But I said a true great remake is Resident Evil 1. The one that was on the GameCube, you know, now it's ported to everywhere else. That is one of the best remakes I've ever played. It's so true to what the original was, and it adds more to it, which makes it actually a really great experience and one of the best games, I think, in the franchise. It's one of my favorites, by far, the best one. If you're talking remakes, that's the best one. So I let her play, try to find out what she has to do. She wasn't really good at it. She really didn't understand the mechanics, like how everything goes. It's very cryptic, which I understand for like newer people coming in, knowing about the game or not. 
Uh, it is very cryptic and it's a bit hard to know. You're gonna maybe read some tutorials or something to help you out. Um, there's a lot of like side things and stuff like that. And I was thinking about it more and I'm like, I wouldn't mind if Capcom, even like for like an anniversary for Resident Evil 1 coming up, I wouldn't mind another remake of Resident Evil 1. Even though I really want a Code Veronica remake before that, I really want a Code Veronica remake. That one needs it the most. I told my sister even about this, that like, you're probably gonna like two remake, three remake going forward or four and all the others. But you know, it's very hard, especially with the fixed camera angle, it's a bit different and people are not used to it, especially today. There's not a lot of games that use that kind of mechanic no more. So I thought if why not remake one again? Do it, you know, the same way, be true to it as it is, and add two perspectives, a third person perspective and a fixed camera perspective. So you can please both, you know, make it a bit better with the acting. Obviously the acting could be a bit better now. Um, if they leave the cheese in there, I wouldn't mind it at all. I love some of the cheesiness of Resident Evil, some of the dialogue and the characters, I wouldn't mind it. And if they even add more to it, I would be fine with that too. Just make it true to what it is. So I was thinking about, I'm like, yeah, why not do a Resident Evil 1 remake? And definitely do a Code Veronica remake. Um, we'll wait on Resident Evil 5 remake for future. I don't want a Resident Evil 5 right now. I can wait on that. And then spin-off wise, just bring back Outbreak. Everyone wants Outbreak. Everyone wants to play together. Or maybe a Revelations 3. There was rumors that they're gonna do another Rebecca story. There's another rumor that there's gonna be a hunk story. I don't know, something like that. That would be cool too. Like experiment with it a little bit, but don't change what Resident Evil was, the essence of Resident Evil, what it is. You know, the survival horror, the inventory being very low, the risk and reward factor, the, is it worth doing, the puzzles, you know, the fights, the boss battles, all that. All the things that make Resident Evil, Resident Evil. Don't change on that. That's why I'm not a really big fan of 7 and 8, because I feel like it kind of turned away from what the franchise used to be. It became a magic or the mysticism of Resident Evil, but it was focused mostly on, you know, the experimentation of, you know, all these, like the people and the animals, all that stuff. You know, being secretive in like a conspiracy and all that and like taking down corporation pretty much. That was main focus of the whole thing. And then it became more of, oh, also we got not werewolves. We got also vampires and like, uh, where are we going now with this? So now it's like more than just a zombie. There's actually like magic elements to it now. You're fighting a ghost. You're fighting. It's like, what is going on? You know? It's going to the point. I know Resident Evil, even in the old ones, when they were trying to make Resident Evil 4, they tried to do like the hook man, which was like a ghost, a hallucination almost. Um, I think they're trying to move into like an era where it's going to be more crypts and mythos and like legends of creatures, but also monsters. So it's becoming more of like a monster fest. And uh, the rumors of nine, I heard like they're going to do Windigo and uh, I don't know what other creatures, but they're going to do other creatures sort of with the infection, you know, that has been in Resident Evil. It's kind of all over the place, but experimenting is not bad, but you need to keep it to what it was. If it's not broken, don't fix it. You know, people love the originals because they were just simple. They weren't trying to be extreme. They were very cheesy and very clunky, and that's what made it scary and fun to play all right guys that's pretty much it for me today what do you guys think about this whole thing resident evil 9 being open world do you like it do you hate it also do you think it's worth to bring back some old franchise and remake them again like resident evil 1 old veronica you know resident evil 5 all those probably will be remade and even resident evil 0 or revelations i don't know outbreak all that what do you guys think let me know in the comments below i thank you so much for watching this long and i'll be seeing you guys in the next one see you all